In this video, we'll create a HTML5 and CSS3 flat, responsive Flexbox grid website. Alright guys, so let's take a look at the design before we start laying out our website here. So at the top of the website, we have our Flexi logo followed by the full screen navigation and in just a minute we'll get to the mobile version then we have this great big full screen image with the clouds and kite followed by some text and some more images so as we scroll down through the page you're gonna see the flexbox grid really take its form when we have kind of that stair section with the images getting larger so we're going to learn a good bit about flexbox grid in this video and how we can create really cool layouts with very little css all right so let's scroll back up and then i want to show you how the flexbox grid sections uh, change their form as we scroll it down but first let me get it to a full screen uh, width here so as we scroll it down you're gonna see that these grid sections are gonna change their form into the mobile version and then we have the images uh, changing to circles here rather than being squares so there's a lot of color here a lot of images so it's kind of a fun layout and uh, let's take a look at the mobile version now for how it's gonna look on the iPhone 7 on the right so let's check out the mobile version here with the drop down navigation and you'll see that we have the same color as we hover over our uh, list items here for our navigation as we do with the full screen and later in the video I'm going to show you how you can change these colors yourself. So you may have noticed that our logo, the text, the images and all the rest are sized down in the mobile version which we're going to use CSS media queries for later in addition to using the Flexbox grid layout. Alright so let's scroll back up and then we'll go ahead and get started. Alright so the one thing that we'll need to get started with the tutorial are the tutorial starter files so in the description of this video will be a link to my website where you can download these starter files so if you need to just pause the video for a moment so you can go get the starter files and then we'll get started so once you open up the starter files you'll find that we have index.html and style.css to get us started so I'm gonna be using sublime text as my text editor you can also use some other programs such as Atom or brackets and make sure you have index.html and style.css open in your text editor as well as index.html open in your web browser so I'm just using Google Chrome here but any modern web browser will do so now let me navigate over to sublime text and we'll go over the starter files in detail here so we know what we're starting with so starting from the top of the document, we've got our doc type HTML followed by our HTML tag, which spans the entire document. Then we have our head section, which tells the browser all of the important information it needs to display our website, such as the Medicare set UTF-8 tag for our characters, our title of the website that's going to show up at the top of Google, Google Chrome, our uh, de with device with initial scale one tag for mobile devices then here we have style.css and then our CSS folder containing font awesome and our navigation uh, CSS files so font awesome is going to be for our social media icons uh, the nav.css is obviously for our navigation and then the cloudfare.com uh, normalize min CSS file is going to also be for our navigation to display the font type that we'll be using. So now let's go ahead and get started by dropping down into the body section of the website where we're going to lay out all of our content. So let's get started with a div uh, class wrapper which is going to span the whole page um, just with the body section here. So I'm going to create a quick note in HTML saying that this is the end of our wrapper since it's going to be 
all the way at the bottom of the page by the time we're finished laying out the website. So again, let's just call this div class wrapper and then we'll get started with the head section. So I'm going to be going back and forth from the finished version to the version that we're working on so we know what we're laying out in detail here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to lay out the section that's just above the navigation. So we're going to call it a header section, but we're going to use a number of divs or dividers here so we can use little CSS uh, as we do our Flexbox grid layout. So let's go ahead and create a row, which is essential with Flexbox grid. So we're going to call this div class row, and then we're just going to give it an ID of header. Okay, and then go ahead and drop down, and we're going to give this uh, div class row a column. So it's going to be div class and we're going to call it col short for column dash 12 okay and then drop down and I'll explain the columns in just a second first let's go ahead and lay out the image for our logo so if we go back to the starter files uh, inside of our image or IMG folder we'll see the image uh, file name for our logo here and that's going to be uh, image source and then the file is img forward slash for the image folder flexi dash logo dot png and then we're also going to give our image here for the logo a class and we'll call it logo okay and then let's go ahead and just drop down and line up our divs the closing tags for our divs for the column and the row for our uh, flexbox layout okay so now that we have our logo added let's go ahead and refresh the page that we're working on here and there we have the flexi logo displaying as the first bit of our content here in Google Chrome. So now let's go back and I want to do a quick explanation of our Flexbox grid columns before we move on through the tutorial and then you'll get a much better feel for it as we lay out the CSS. So here we have Flexbox uh, column 12. So that's going to be the widest of the columns. So basically uh, we have a row and inside of that we have the possibility of 12 columns so if we divide uh, 12 or 100 by 12 rather we get 8.33 and so on so uh, just imagine the navigation which has six columns um, which would be 16.666 uh, and so on um, being uh, two rows so if we had 12 navigation items that would be the equivalent of one flexbox row so we could have up to 12 columns on the page here so we're not going to use all 12 up in this tutorial but um, with the layout that you're given with the tutorial uh, after we do the CSS you'll see that you can have the 12 and work with it to customize the website as your very own so now let's go ahead and let's lay out the info for our navigation. So what we'll do is let's drop down and let's add another div class row for our flexbox layout and then we'll add since it's a full width column uh, we want it to be div class col 12. Okay so now let's drop down and let's get started with our navigation. So what we're going to start with is nav role navigation and nav role for those of you who are unfamiliar with uh, will allow for more accessibility with HTML5 and we're going to give this an ID of nav. Okay, now let's drop down and we're going to add uh, an input for this and a label and then later in a couple of minutes I'm going to show you 
how you can change uh, the appearance of the navigation since the CSS is already laid out for us in nav.css. Okay, so go ahead and write input class. So it's input class trigger and then the type is going to be a checkbox so this is going to trigger the mobile navigation and then we're going to give it an ID of main capital N for nav capital B for button and then we're going to give it a label so we're going to have label for the ID of main nav button on click and then close your input or sorry your label bracket and then menu and then close the label uh, tag. Okay. So now let's go back and let's add our unordered list for our navigation and then the list items will start to appear on the version that we're working on. So underneath the UL write LI and inside of our list item we'll have a link So it's a href, and I'm not going to send the links to anywhere right now, so I'm just going to put a hashtag here. So that's just going to keep us on the same page rather than sending us elsewhere. But what you'd want to do is just write, say, for example, home or, or index.html for our home navigation link and then about us.html for example for the next one when you're creating a navigation linking to other pages of the website okay so now let's write about us and then we'll just lay out the rest of our list items here so li ahref and then write products okay and then the fourth one liahref is blog and then the fifth is specials and feel free to copy and paste your uh, list items and links here and then the sixth is contact us all right so now let's go ahead and refresh the page that we've been working on and I want to show you really quickly once we do where you can change the color of the navigation Okay, so if we refresh, here we have our navigation laid out for us already. And if we flex the website down, it's going to take the mobile uh, form already for us. So there we have the menu uh, text that we're seeing there from the label that we created. And we have the icon for the drop down menu. So if we go into the CSS folder and then open up nav.css, let me just show you really quickly where you can change the colors. So here we have under nav ul lia the background color of the navigation and then the hover color right here. So 
So this navigation, I'll put a link uh, to the original navigation in the description of the video so you can check it out. And now let's drop down and let's create the next div class row which is going to be for the kite image here with the clouds. So this similar to the rows that we've been creating with the with the column 12 uh, we're gonna do the same thing here since it takes up 100 percent of the screen we will use the widest column that we have so that's gonna be div class equals col dash 12 okay and then I'm just gonna do the image here for the kite so we're in the image folder and then it's forward slash kite dot png. All right, so now if we go ahead and refresh the page that we're working on, we're going to see a gigantic image here for that uh, kite with the clouds, which later will size down so it only and always takes up 100% of the screen, as we see here, and in the mobile version. Okay, so let's move down beneath the kite image and do another row and column for our text here where it says, Welcome to Flexi. So I'm going to write div class row. And we're also going to have this the widest it can be. So we'll do a div class column dash 12 and then I'm going to add our heading to text here which is welcome to flexi exclamation point so for this heading class or we're gonna give it a uh, a class that's h2 dark so throughout the the uh, the website here we have the dark text and the light text so the dark text is gonna show up twice for us and the light text is going to show up several times so what we'll do is a class for the dark text so we're just going to call this h2 class equals dark and then later we'll style that to have the hex value uh, that's kind of that dark blue color that we're seeing there with the welcome to flexi text All right, so now let's drop down and what we're also going to do is let's add some padding here or let's do the um, the image beneath that first and then we'll add a little bit of padding to our uh, text section above it. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy the row and column 12 with the image here so we can add the uh, paper airplane and plane shadow image here which the URL for or extension is image forward slash paper and then let's add that padding here to the, uh, the heading to text. So I'm just going to add a 2% padding to create a little bit of space above and beneath the welcome to flexi text okay so that's gonna space it out a little more and then let's also add some space to the uh, the row here and the background color for the paper airplane image with the image shadow underneath. 
So we're going to make it a background color, which is the same as the background of the image. And we're going to do this throughout the, um, the design here, a little bit of internal background color. So we don't have to create a number of different classes for each background color that we create in the CSS. So let me just show you really quickly why we're adding the background color. So this is going to create a really smooth transition down to the images that are underneath so we don't have any separation between uh, that plane taking off image and the blue background for the paper airplane and plane shadow. So let's also just create a little bit of padding um, on top of and beneath uh, the actual airplanes that we're seeing here so we can have more of that great uh, blue background showing up for us. So let's do a padding of 5% on the top, 0 on the right, and then 3% on the bottom. Okay, and now if we go and refresh it's going to look a little bit off right here because that's outside of the page when we refresh it. But once we add our uh, our uh, CSS to make the images the max width of 100%, we're going to see some nice um, some nice padding there. So let's move down and do the get ready for takeoff section next. So this is where uh, we're going to start to use some of that uh, Flexbox grid responsive styling with the columns with using multiple columns per row. So go ahead and add another div class row and then we're gonna add a column here and we're gonna give this div class column column 12 or sorry column 11 rather than column 12 okay and then we can drop down and let's go ahead and add our heading to text where it says get ready for takeoff so this isn't the dark text uh, which means we won't need to add a class for our heading text. So just go ahead and write get ready for takeoff exclamation point. Alright and then drop down and we'll stay within the same row but what we're gonna do to add the airplane taking off image next to it is we're going to add another div class column so I'm just gonna create the background color here uh, which is gonna be the orange color and that's the hex value 3c or I'm sorry f6931e Alright, so now we can drop down and if we refresh it we should have our, there we have our H2 text with the background color in orange. And now let's add the column for our takeoff airplane image here in the blue. So just drop down and stay within the same div class row but add a new div class column and this will be div class col3. okay and then we'll do image takeoff dot PNG so the div class columns don't have to add up to 12 so this will be interesting once we get to the CSS and we experiment with the different uh, flexbox grid sections leading up to the full width at 12 uh, and how we're gonna create kind of the stair, 
the stairway that's going down in the opposite direction with the images. So now let's drop down and let's do the next section, which is we're flying around the globe. We're flying around the globe, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cheat a little bit and copy and paste this. So all we have to do is change the background color to the green shade, which is 1A B C 9C, and then let's change our heading two text here to we're flying around the globe and then we'll also change the image which is going to be the orange globe image underneath it so we'll just change this to image forward slash orange globe or orange dash globe dot png so now if we refresh We'll have our we're flying around the globe text there with the green background and our orange image. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the same for the next section. The only difference here is we're going to obviously change the background color and the hex value will be E5 EF 3F and we're going to change the heading 2 class to the dark class in addition to changing the text to above the clouds and over the sea so above the clouds and amp over the sea and we'll give this heading 2 class the class of dark since it's the dark text or color and then let's change this image and this one is simply waves.png okay and then if we refresh similar to the last two there we have our above the clouds text and our wave image okay so we have two more to do here so I'm just gonna paste again our section and later we're gonna change the columns uh, once we're doing the CSS so it creates again that stair uh, appearance so the background color for the blue here is 34495E and then we'll write in just 20 or in just 42 hours and 27 minutes which I looked it up and I think that's the world record for flying around the world and they had to stop once to my knowledge anyways the next image is the plain uh, right here so that's going to be simply plain dot PNG and then we'll do this last one which is so come along for the ride alright so we'll change the hex value here to zero zero a f e one and then write so come along for the ride and then the image here is paper dash blue So paper dash blue dot png. All right, so now we have all of our sections here laid out with the um, the the two different columns, and as I said later on, we're going to change these column. 
uh, sizes to create the stairway type sections. And one thing that we'll also do here, so we don't have to do it later when we're styling it for the mobile version, is we're going to go ahead and create a class for these circular images here uh, for how it changes its shape once it sizes down to the mobile version. So what we'll do is we'll go back to the images uh, inside of our uh, column threes here and we're just going to give these images a class of circle. So starting with the takeoff image, uh, you can just copy the class circle and paste it to all of the images that we have beneath here. All the way down to the paper-blue image. So again, later on we're going to give it a uh, mobile style so the image will change to a circle uh, as we size the website down. Alright, so now let's go ahead and let's add this great big uh, blue plane taking off image beneath it. So what we'll do is we're going to create a another div class row. So go ahead and write div class row and then div class call 12 and then we'll give it the image which is plain or img forward slash plain dash background And then we're also going to give this a background color, which is going to be the light blue color that we're seeing for the follow us text or behind the follow us text. Okay, so I'm going to drop these divs down so they line up properly. and let's go ahead and refresh and it's going to be a lot larger than the screen that we have here the screen width okay so next we can drop down and add our uh, follow us section so let's do another div class row and then we'll give this a column of 12 div class call 12 and then we'll drop down and we'll create a heading 2 text or tag and just write follow us All right, and then beneath that, we can move down to our social media links in just a moment. So let's go ahead and, and give it the background color, the light blue background color here. So we'll go with style equals background color And the hex value for this is 66DF, or sorry, 66D4FF. Okay, so now let's drop down and let's start our social media section so, so there we have our background color
And later on, I'm going to show you how you can change the hover color here also with the social media links. So I'm just going to copy this div class row and uh, div class column 12. And then let's remove our heading 2 text. And we'll start with a unordered list. So right, UL. And we're going to give this unordered list a class of social. Okay, and then drop down and we'll add our list items per uh, social media link. So we're going with our list item, then our link, and I'm going to leave it blank for right now, but ideally you'll want to link to your social media page here. If you wanted to check mine out, I'll put them in the link, or in the, in the, uh, I'll link them in the video description. And then we'll do inside of the link an I class for our font awesome icons. So the first is FAFA -A Facebook. And then close out the I class. So the I class doesn't actually stand for icon, it's for uh, italics, but uh, Font Awesome uses the I class for their icons here. So if we refresh, there we have our first icon there, which is the Facebook icon. All right, so now let's go ahead and add the rest of our social icons here. So I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'm just going to copy and paste this a couple of times and then we'll change the icon uh, or I class per social media outlet. So the second one is going to be Google Plus. So right, Google dash plus. The third we have Twitter. And then the fourth, we have YouTube, with the fifth being Instagram. OK, so let's go back to the version we're working on and refresh. And there we have our social links. So they're a little off here. Uh, that's my mistake. We actually don't need a closing unordered list tag after every one of these. We only need it after the last one. So you can go ahead and get rid of that if you added the unordered list uh, closing tag there when you copy and pasted it. So now we have it lining up nicely. And what we can do next is let's drop down and we'll add the last little section of the website here, which is going to be what's called a socket of a website, where we have the copyright symbol for the Flexi website. So go ahead and create another div class row. And then we'll drop down and give this a or let's add some style. So we're going to do all internal style for this, which is pretty simple. So we're going to give it a background color, which is that dark blue background, uh, 34495E. And then we'll just give it the border on the top. So right, border dash top. It's going to be two pixels in width and then write solid and the hex value for that orange color that we used before is F6931E. Okay, and then we can drop down and let's add our div class call 12 and inside of that, all we need is our paragraph text for the uh, 
copyright symbol and flexi text here. So do the P tag for paragraph, open and close, and then ampersand, copy, semicolon, flexi, period. Okay, so now when we refresh, there we have the start of our socket here with it already being colored. Okay. So we've got a lot of images, a lot of background color laid out, and thankfully we are ready to move over to our CSS. So I'm just going to get rid of a little bit of the extra space here in our HTML document, and then we can move over to style.css. So at the top of the CSS we have a couple of imported uh, URLs here. So these are Google fonts. So the first thing that we're going to reference following the Google fonts, and if you want to get your own Google fonts, just go ahead and do a Google search for Google fonts. First thing that we're going to reference is called a reset style for the HTML document itself using an asterisk symbol. And we're just going to get rid of any inherent margin and padding here and then we'll add box sizing border box so this is going to give us uh, more control along with margin and padding zero so we can use up 100 percent of the browser uh, using this little uh, style fix here so now let's go ahead and drop down and the next thing that we're going to uh, style is going to be the uh, html document and the uh, the body section of the website. So let's go over here and here we have our HTML tag and then we have the body tag and we're gonna do some uh, some styles that will apply to everything in our layout. So we're gonna give it a height of 100%. We're gonna give it a background of uh, white which is the hex value FFF and then we're gonna tell the text to align center okay and then we want to give it a font so we're gonna give it a font size of 1.15 M or EM and then we're gonna give it a line height of 1 and then the font family that we'll use is Open Sans, and this will be for our paragraph text from the Google Fonts, and then our backup font is Sans Serif. And after this, we'll just give a uh, color for our font, which is going to be white. So write color, and then hex value FFF, and then let's take a look at what happens when we refresh the page. All right, so there we have everything lining up nicely and in the center here. We still have to work on our images a little bit, but we see the text and the smaller images lining up in the center, as well as our uh, links that we'll see at the bottom for our social icons and uh, follow us in flexi text. So next, uh, we're going to add the wrapper style. Go ahead and just, just pause the screen for a second if you need to, because I messed up the recording a little bit here, and add the style for the wrapper. So let me just go ahead and there we go. Okay, so just go ahead and add that style for the wrapper there, which is gonna span up the entire page similar to HTML and body. So we just gave it a simple background color of off-white. And remember, for classes, we have the period before wrapper. For IDs, we have the hex value, or the, um, the, the hashtag, rather. So we're gonna give the header uh, where the Flexi logo is the same background color as the kite image, which is AFDED4. And now let's refresh. Okay, and there we have our 
background color and then let's give our logo a little bit of padding we want to create a little space for it so right here we have our logo class so we'll reference that again with uh, a period for classes rather than the uh, hashtag for IDs so write dot logo or period logo and then we'll give it a padding of 2% all around which will take care of the top bottom and left right which we just really need our left right so if I refresh so 15 pixel padding that's about 2% Let's just go ahead and change that. Okay, and refresh. So that's about the same. Okay, so that's good. All right, so now let's drop down and I just wanna take a look here at how it looks on the mobile version as compared to the, uh, the padding that we had there. So later we'll change it so the logo is a little bit smaller on the mobile version but for now let's go ahead and take care of our images so let's drop down and reference our images with IMG and we want to give our images a maximum width so they're not off of the screen so starting with our kite image and then we'll see it take effect with other images that are off the screen. So it looks like we have about three here in total. So write IMG, open and close your swirly brackets, and then we'll give it a max width of 100%. Okay, so let's refresh, and there we have our kite image we have the paper airplane image and then the airplane image at the very bottom uh, staying within our screen so it's starting to look pretty good and staying within uh, the size or width of the browser that we designate okay so next let's drop down and let's take care of this uh, dark text here or the text that we want to change from white to dark. So we'll reference that with our heading 2 tag. So h2.dark for the dark class, or h2 class dark. And then we're going to give this the same dark blue color as the airplane section down here. Okay, so that's going to be the hex value. Uh, three four four nine five e. All right, so if we refresh, there we have our welcome to flexi text in the dark text version. And now let's go ahead and apply the uh, the railway Google font to it. So we're going to style all of our heading two text here. Okay, so we're going to give this a font weight of 300, which is a light, thin font. We're going to give it a size of 2 EM, which is about 32 pixels, the line height of 1, and then we'll give it the railway font with a backup font of sans serif. Then we'll give it the color white with a padding of 2% all around but let's refresh it first okay so there we have it in the railway and a little bit larger it appears and then we'll give it the padding here and then let's give it okay if we refresh there we have a little more padding okay 
So now we're going to make it center inside of our, of our section. So as you can see with all this, no matter how wide or narrow we flex it, it's always going to be centered. So we're going to use some cool styling here uh, to center it, which may be new to you. So let's go back to our style sheet here. And we're going to say position relative top 50% and then transform translate y minus 50% so this is going to center it so we go top 50% and then minus 50%. So now if we refresh it, we're looking uh, pretty good here. So let's drop down to the social media section. And I actually forgot to give up some space here. Okay, so we'll reference our social class here. And this is going to be dot social and list style type none so that's going to take away the dots so we have no dots here for our list items and then uh, display in line for social li Okay, and then let's style the icons themselves after we have them uh, lined up here in line. So we'll reference that with dot social i, and then we're going to give them a font size of 3 m and then we'll want to space them out so we'll give it a margin of 1% and a padding of 5% and then we'll give it the background color which is going to be white. Okay, so that spaces them out quite nicely here. and then color FFF for white okay and then refresh so now let's add our hover color here so drop down and write dot social I colon hover and then we'll give it a color of hex value F6 931E okay and then lastly let's just style the paragraph text at the very bottom for our socket section with the copyright symbol and we'll give that a padding of 2% okay so now we're looking pretty good before we add any of our media query styles okay so let's drop down underneath the paragraph uh, style here and create our media query section so what I'm gonna do is create a quick comment here in our CSS just saying that our media queries are now starting 
So the first media query that we're going to lay out is going to change our heading to text and the social icons at the bottom and we're going to give this a max width of 900 pixels. So write at media all and in parentheses max width 900 pixels. So once we flex the website down to that mark uh, we're going to have the change in the heading to and icons. So let's take a look at the finished version here so you can see what I'm talking about uh, when we reach the 900 pixel mark here. So I'll just flex it down a little bit and there we have the change in the heading to text and the icons. So now let's go back over to the version that we've been working on and uh, get started with the changes to the heading to style. So just write H2, open and close the swirly brackets, and then we're going to give it a font size which is smaller than the original. So the original was 2EM. So let's go with 1.5. Okay, and now let's drop down and do our social icons. And we're going to change that from 3 to 2 EM. So now let's drop down and create our media query that's specifically for our Flexbox grid row and columns. So we're going to do media all and min or minimum width. 768 pixels. So media all and min width 768 pixels. Then open and close your swirly brackets. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll, we'll call to our row class and we're going to tell it to display flex and we're going to give it a margin of zero. So if you want to add margin in between uh, the rows you can do it here and then when we refresh there we have it displaying as rows but it's kind of messy because we didn't add our columns yet. All right. So everything's kind of pushed off to the side. Let's add the margin zero now. And then refresh. Okay, and we still have this line underneath the, uh, the plane image there, which we'll take care of in just a moment. Okay, so now let's go back to our style sheet here. And what we're going to do is address our columns now. So before we lay out the columns individually, say column 3 or column 11, what we're going to do is we're going to create a quick style here that will make it so there's no margin uh, for the last column in a row. So go ahead and we're going to create uh, or add some brackets here so go ahead and add your brackets and then inside of it we'll write class asterisk equals in quotations column dash and then colon last dash child and then open and close your swirly brackets and we're just going to give it margin zero so the last column in a row has zero margin uh, added to it and it floats sort of all the way to the side of the screen. Now let's add our individual columns so I'm just going to add column one here and then we'll add some that will change our layout so we'll add column dash one flex one. All right. So now, if we refresh, we're not really using that um, that column one. 
But what we'll do next to really take uh, effect here is let's skip down and we'll do column 12, which we have for a lot of our sections here. And then we'll do flex 12. And this is going to make our full width sections display just as we want them to. Okay, so there we have our full width sections with the images especially laying out nicely for us and the sections at the very bottom. Okay, so now let's go ahead and just add a couple more of the columns that we've used in our layout here. So let's do column-3 and then we'll do column-11 so we can see how they take effect here. So right, column three, flex three. And then if we refresh, there we have our column threes. And now let's do column 11. And this will lay out all of our color sections and images off to the right. So here we have our column 11 and then column 3 underneath it. So now refresh. Okay. So there we have them, but they're not yet lining up like the stairway uh, that we want them to. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to lay out all of the columns in our CSS and then we'll come back to the HTML and change them so we get the stairway feel uh, going down sort of stairs in the opposite direction with the images off to the right hand side. Okay. So let's go back over here and I'm going to kind of fly through this. We're just going to lay out all of the columns 1 through 12 that we're missing here. So we have uh, column and flex 2 and then I'll just do column uh, 4 to 10 really quickly here. All right, so I'll lay these out really quickly here, sped up, and then we'll go back and let's experiment with the different flex sections. So if we refresh it, we're not going to see any change here because we're not using any other flexes other than the 3, 11, and 12 right now. But what we'll do is let's go back to our uh, HTML document here and I'm actually just going to add a background color to get rid of that line there that's above the follow us text. So for the row with the plain dash background image, go ahead and just have that background color with 66DF or 66D4FF to get rid of that line. And now let's go up and we can experiment with the uh, flex box grid sections here. Okay, so let's make our way up to the column 11, the first one. So if we drop down under that, what we're going to do is we'll descend from there. So We'll leave that column as 11, but we'll want to drop down to the next one and make it 10. So just change that to div class column 10. The next we'll make div class column 9. And that's going to start to create the stair section here. So column 9, then column 8, and then column 7. Okay, so now if we refresh, there we have our sort of stairs laid out uh, with the flexbox grid sections. All right, so let's go back over to our style sheet now and drop down and we'll create the next media query. So go over to style.css. And we'll drop down and we'll create 
a media query that's similar to this last one, but instead of having it as the minimum width, we'll have it as max width 768 pixels. So go ahead and change minimum to max. Okay. So this is going to take effect when we get down to, say, an iPad width or an iPad mini as well as cell phones. So here's what we have uh, working with for the version we're working on um, on the mobile version right now. And let's start from the top. So the first thing that will change will be the logo. So let's just reference that with dot logo for the logo class and we'll change the max width to 185 pixels down from I believe it's around 220 pixels for the full width version and then the next thing that we'll reference are our heading two fonts so we'll give them a font size of 1.25 EM padding of 3% all around and then if we refresh there we have them uh, the heading twos a little bit smaller looking kind of nice for us here and if we refresh this version actually let's go up a little bit here I think I missed something in the original heading to text or style so transform I just forgot an S so that will help center it okay so refresh and now we're centered for the full width so for the mobile version now it's not going to be centered but we'll correct that So let's go back down to our media query for the 768 pixel max width and we'll want to add that transform translate y from negative 50% to just 0%. Okay, and then refresh and now we have our heading to text centered for the mobile version. Alright, so the next thing that we'll do is let's drop down and let's style our paragraph text. So the flexi text at the very bottom, we're just going to make that a little bit smaller and then we'll do one last media query for the social icons at the bottom which are too large right now for the mobile version so write P to reference the paragraph text and then we'll give it a font size of 0.9 EM So, whoops, that didn't really change anything. I'm just going to change this from font to font size. And so that should be around 14 or 15 pixels. Okay, so now what we want to do is we'll want to make these images, the circle images, uh, just as they appear in the finished version. So what we'll do is we'll take advantage of that circle class that we added to the images and round off these images that have the colored backgrounds. Okay, so drop down and let me just show you the class we're referencing. So here we have the circle class for those images and write dot circle for the circle class 
open and close your brackets and then we'll give it a border radius of 50 percent and that's going to make it a circle okay and then we'll want to have it have a max width so it doesn't take up the whole uh, section there so we'll give it a max width of 40 percent so that looks a little better there especially when we size it down to uh, the phone or mobile version and then we'll just give it a little bit of padding on the top and bottom so we'll give it a padding of 5% top bottom 0 left right All right. okay so that's looking pretty good as we size it down here and then what we'll do is we'll change the size of our social icons once we get down to the 500 pixel mark. So I'm just going to copy this media all and max width 768 pixels and change it to 500 pixels. Okay, and then to reference the social icons, just write social i open and close your brackets and we'll give it a font size of 1.25 m or em from the uh, 2 which was for the 900 pixel mark okay so now if we bring it up to full width we'll size it down it goes from 3 to 2 down to 1.25 and if you want to add more social icons, say a 6, you can just adjust that so they don't uh, bring themselves onto separate lines. Okay, so now let's refresh. And here we have the finished version that we've been working on all laid out for us. Okay, so that does it for the Flexi Flexbox Grid website tutorial. I want to thank you for sticking around. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you in the next video.